Well, executives at the opioid manufacturer Purdue Pharma have claimed for years they weren't aware that their flagship drug, the one from which they made most of their profits, OxyContin, was being widely abused by users across the country. But now, after making billions of dollars off the worst drug crisis in the history of this country, one in which tens of thousands of people have died, the New York Times has uncovered documents that show that Purdue Pharma executives were aware of the abuse, even as they aggressively marketed the drug to new users, some of whom died. Barry Meyer is the investigative journalist who broke the story. He's the author of Painkiller, an Empire of Deceit and the Origin of America's Opioid Epidemic, and he joins us now. Barry, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you. It's, this story has not received, I don't think, enough attention. So tell us what Purdue Pharma knew. Uh, remarkably, uh, what they knew was that the drug was being abused. They had gotten special permission from the FDA to promote this drug as less prone to abuse than, yes. than other drugs. and. Uh, they kind of took this, this claim, they ran with it, uh, they made claims that were not true, but during that whole time, they were aware that people were abusing the drug. Uh, they had reports from their salesmen, they had reports from doctors, they had reports from law enforcement officials, and they sat on these reports. They made, uh, they made no mention of them to regulators, to authorities, to lawmakers, and they just kept selling and selling and selling. So, uh, looking back, I mean, this drug was shipped to some counties famously in Kentucky and West Virginia in quantities that weren't justifiable under any circumstances, legitimate circumstances you can imagine. So it must have been obvious what was going on. They must have known. Why has no one been charged from this company? Well, the, in fact, uh, the prosecutors that investigated this company wanted to charge them. They wanted to bring very serious charges against the executives. Our report and, and the material that is in Painkiller is drawn from a secret Justice Department report in which prosecutors recommended charging three top executives of Purdue Pharma with serious felonies that would have sent them to prison. But they got stopped by top uh, Justice Department officials who blocked these indictments. Who, who are the officials who blocked those indictments? Uh, they were the top uh, people in uh, the Bush administration who were running the Justice Department at that time. It's, unbelie it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. It's, it is so, unbelievable. So do you, do you think we've passed a point where it would be impossible to charge the people partly responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of Americans for crimes? Well, you know, the, I, you know they, the statute of limitations has probably run on these crimes. It's probably impossible to bring ch criminal charges. There are a lot of cities and states that are bringing civil charges, civil lawsuits against Purdue Farmer. I mean, I think the important thing is this. We are now in the midst, and you've reported on, on this, uh, uh, of a great public health crisis. The only way to get out of it is to understand how it started. Yes, exactly. That is the story that painkiller tells. Uh, and, and we need to understand that story. We need to know who needs to be held to account. We can't treat corporate executives with kid gloves when these companies are flooding our country with millions and millions of pain pills. It's exact, life expectancy for middle class Americans just went down for the third year in a row two days ago. Barry, I appreciate your reporting. Thank you. Thank you, Tucker.